Hi everyone, thanks for joining this training. My name is Therese Brinkate and I hope to share with you some really useful information that's going to help you as an author with your list building. So we're looking at the four crucial mistakes that authors often make with list building and how to avoid them. Mistake number one is not gathering an email list at all. Um, I'm sure you've heard that saying the money's in the list and certainly that's something that I've always heard on the internet and I didn't listen to it at first which is something I really regret is not gathering an email list right from the beginning. So what a lot of authors do is at the end of their books they have a, a little saying saying follow me on Twitter and Facebook or they have a link to the website at the end of their book but these are really not going to be effective in in building your, your market. You might get one or two followers, but that's fickle and not long term. With an email list, you don't have to pay a penny to advertisers if you have a substantial enough list. You own your list and you dictate the content. You can build a relationship with that list and you can create loyal fans, which will really help you. Over time, you could have a marketing machine that runs itself. So it's really, really worthwhile right from the start building an email list. Mistake number two is just expecting readers to sign up to your list without offering anything in return. Nowadays, people are quite shy in exchanging their email. Um, they know about email lists and you need to offer something of value in exchange for an email, not just ask people to sign up to your list. For example, you could offer a free novella, um, a short story, perhaps a backstory to your current series. You could use your imagination, there, there's no limit, but make sure it is something your ideal reader will love. Uh, for example, you could have a dossier on any of the characters in your novels. The, fine, the mistake number three having a bad landing page. Now the landing page is the page that your readers will use to decide whether or not to hand over their email. It needs to be attractive and compelling and need that call to action needs to be compelling. So not just a submit, but something that's really going to make them excited. It's an example of a bad landing page. Here we have Sign up to Shane Rhodes newsletter to get updates on new releases and special offers. It's not really very compelling to give away both your name and your email. And the call to action is just sign up. How bland. Really, I'm probably not going to go there. And at the same time, he's also got an advert for one of his latest books um, on that page. And well, he might actually get some people to buy, but he's probably got them to click away from the from the landing page. And as a result, he might have once off purchases, but he hasn't uh, really built up a relationship for repeat business. Not a good landing page at all. He has a good one. We've got an attractive page. There's a nice attractive picture of the book. Get Desert Heroes Free Today. It's a prequel to the acclaimed series, a little bit of a blurb about that, that book. He's only asking for email. Let's not clutter up and ask people to put too many fields to fill in. Email is enough. Everybody knows that, that nobody's going to send you a personalized email. They understand the way that um, these autoresponders work. So I think just asking for an email is the best. And then your call to action, send me my free novel. It's not just sign up, it's saying, okay, I'm getting my email so I can get a free novel. Much more likely to get some people actually signing up for this list. Mistake number four is not effectively following up with your list. Okay, you get the landing page going, you've got people signing up. What do you do after that? Email is a great tool for a long-term business. Unlike social media, which is very fickle and flippant and people come and go, email is something that people are probably always going to have. So you need to treat that reader's email with respect, but you also need to make sure they don't forget you. So it's important not to um, be too, take too long in, in communicating with your list, otherwise they might put you in the spam folder. So how regularly should you email? Really, it's very difficult to say a it is up to you and your style, but the key is to maintain a regular schedule, at least once a quarter, but preferably more often. 
let's say a monthly newsletter is quite a good option. That's not going to overwhelm your readers, but it's going to keep you at the top of their mind. So they will remember you um, and, and not be likely to put your email in the spam folder. What type of email content should you send to readers? Obviously, email is a great way to tell prospective readers about new launches. But please don't only do that. People don't want to only be sold to. Build a relationship. Add interesting content. So what sort of content are you going to to want to add? For example, what you are currently reading. Readers might be interested to know what their, their author likes to read. What you are working on. So what kind of novels you're working on. What stories, what books. What are your thought process behind it? What interesting research? You know, without giving the game away of the novels, but building um, some sort of excitement and anticipation. Other interesting bits of information you feel on you are shareworthy. What would you normally like to share with your friends? Um, you know, without giving away or telling them the daily tasks that you do with your little children, you can share interesting bits of information that you like to engage with. And a good tip is to always provide links to your books at the end of the mail. So you're not doing a hard sell, but there's always an opportunity for possibly people to buy your books. So what tools do you need to make all of this work? You obviously need a website. Having a website is a good idea for an author anyway, but you need a basic website to at least host your landing page where people will sign up. You can also... On that landing page, then include Facebook retargeting pixels, which could be ter- terribly useful when you do Facebook advertising and retargeting particular audiences. I'm not going to go into depth on that because there's lots of information out there. Then, the big thing that you do need is an autoresponder. So, I'm going to compare two big companies and then also provide you with a third different option. The companies I'm going to look at are MailChimp, which is the most frequently recommended um, autoresponder company for new authors out there. And then Aweber, which is apparently the most popular autoresponder company, uh, most used by a number of people, companies and internet marketers. So MailChimp, why is MailChimp so often used? It's because they have a free plan. Everybody loves free, right? First 2,000 subscribers are free, gratis, and for nothing on MailChimp. Um, the, 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 then from 2,000 to 2,500, you pay $30 monthly. 2,800 to $5,050 monthly. And up, up to $25,000, $150 monthly. And then they don't even give figures for beyond 25000 If you get a bigger list than that, well, that could be very exciting. MailChimp, however, does not like affiliate links. If your business model includes any type of affiliate marketing, so if, say, for example, you're a non-fiction author and you're in the diet niche and you also want to send them other offers, MailChimp could potentially shut you down. Not saying they will, but there is a possibility of that. They've got all sorts of caveats around putting affiliate links. Aweber. Aweber unfortunately does not have a free plan, but if you're a new sign-up, your first month can be free on a trial basis. Their pricing is pretty similar, $1 different really. 0 to 500, well, but still more expensive than um, MailChimp, it's $19 a month. 500 to 2,500 nearly $30, two and a half to 5000 nearly $50 monthly, and then up to $25,149 monthly. But what if you could be independent of all of these high monthly costs associated with autoresponders? I would like to introduce you to Brett Rotecki, and I'm going to hand over to him. He's a well-respected internet marketer, and he's going to tell us more about the different option. Thanks. Over to you, Brett. Hey guys, Brett here. And when I first started my internet marketing business, I used MailChimp to send out my emails. And the reason I used MailChimp is because they had a free plan. And quite frankly, at the time, I couldn't afford to pay an expensive autoresponder. And then one day I logged in my account and I got a message that said it was suspended. I was not able to send emails anymore. 
I'm not really sure what I did. I had a good open rate. I had a good response rate. And my spam complaints were low. Just one day out of the blue, they let me know that I was no longer able to send emails with their system. Even worse, when I went and sent in a support ticket asking why I wasn't able to send emails, they completely ignored me. They just canceled my account and ignored any contact attempts that I made after that. So basically what happened is overnight I lost my business because in the IM business, if you can't send emails, you are not in business. I woke up one morning and my business was completely gone, completely taken away from me. Fortunately, I had saved backups of my email list, so I was able to look for another autoresponder service. I ended up going over to Aweber, not because they were my first choice, but because they were one of the few that actually allowed me to upload my existing list. And of course, they didn't allow me to upload my entire list, though. They filtered out some of the emails, and I ended up losing about 30% of my existing list. They never really gave me any explanation as to why they were filtering out those emails. These were emails from people that were opening my messages that wanted to get my messages, but for one reason or another, without any explanation, Aweber simply said that I couldn't upload those emails to their servers. But at least I had 70% of my list in an autoresponder and I was able to send out emails again. Honestly, at the time, I was happy with that because it's better than being completely out of business. Things with Aweber were great for a while. I built my list up to over 9,000 subscribers, I was getting great open rates, I was getting high click rates, and I was getting low spam complaints. Everything was wonderful and I was happy that I was actually making money in the internet marketing business. All my hard work and effort was finally paying off. In fact, I was getting much higher responses than the industry standard. I was getting 20 to 22 open rates, 10 to 12% click rates, low complaint rates, and low bounces. And then one day, all of that changed. All of a sudden, I started getting hundreds of bounces from my emails. I didn't know what had happened. I thought that I was doing something wrong. So I called Aweber up and I asked them what I had done to cause this huge increase in bounces, which was also giving me a decrease in my opens and in my clicks. And you know what they told me? They told me that I didn't do anything wrong. They told me that the problem was a spammer on their system had caused one of their IP addresses to get a bad reputation. So in essence, what had happened was somebody else using the AppWarper platform had hurt everybody inside of the AWeber platform. Even people like me who were sending good solid emails to people who had actually subscribed. In essence, I was personally suffering not for something that I had done, but because I was using a multi-user system that had allowed a negative user to sneak in and hurt the entire platform. After a while, I noticed that the bounces weren't so high anymore, but I wasn't getting anywhere near as many opens. Where I was getting 2,000, 2,300, 2,400 opens on a single email, now I was only getting 1,500, 1,400, 1,300, and sometimes even much less. And I started to get worried. I thought that I was losing touch with my customers. I thought I was losing my list, and I thought I was losing my business. So once again, I called Aweber and I asked them if I was doing something wrong. I asked them if there was a problem with me. And once again, they told me the problem wasn't with me. The problem was with them. The problem was with their system and their system being on blacklists because a spammer had gotten into their network and was using Aweber in a negative way. Once again, I was being hurt, not from what I had done, but because I was using a multi-user system and a negative user was hurting everybody. After a couple of months, I had enough. I decided that it was time to create my own system. It was time to create my own way to send out emails to my subscribers so that I don't have to rely on anybody but myself. And because of this, I started working on the Mailit WordPress plugin. Now, after nearly six months of development, I felt that I had a reliable system. I felt that I had a system that I could not only sell to my customers, but that I could also use in my own business. So I decided to put my money where my mouth is. I decided to bite the bullet, delete my Aweber list, and put my entire business in the hands of my Mailit WordPress plugin. 
So here are some of the results that I've been getting with the Mail It WordPress plugin. And I wanted to use it in my own business for two reasons. First of all, I wanted to get better open rates and better deliverability than I was getting with the autoresponders. And second of all, because I strongly feel that if I'm going to ask people to trust their business in the hands of my software, I should be willing to trust my own business in the hands of the very same software. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the email opens and click rates that I've gotten. So the first one I'm going to show you is my review for Facebook Live Wire. And you can see here, I got 2,080 opens with the very first email that I sent. I got a 21% open rate to that email. Now that email didn't have a clickable link in it, so it doesn't show me any clicks, but I want you to see the open rate immediately as soon as I started using my mail at WordPress plugin with the very same list that I was sending to Aweber I went from 1200 opens to 2000 opens how about my review for Luke McGuire's InstaViral software let's go ahead and take a look at that one and you can see I got 2000 opens 21 percent 994 unique clicks. I got a 21% open rate and a 10% click rate. Now that's more like it. That's the kind of email open rates and click rates that I want to get. Not the 12 or 1300 opens that I had been getting before with my regular autoresponder. But let's not stop there. Let's look at a few more of them. So this one actually went down a little bit. I only got 1,964 open rates and 940 unique clicks. It's still a 19% open rate and a still 9% click rate, which is still much better than I was getting before with my regular autoresponder. Now this is slightly lower, but hey, they can't all be as high as the other ones. But you know what? Maybe they actually can. Let's see what happened when I sent out for a private webinar that I did with my partner, Mike from Maine. And here it is, 2,320 opens. I got a 20% open rate. Now the click rate was a little lower on this because it was a webinar sign up. It wasn't a link to a review on my review blog. But I want you to notice that open rate. 20%, 2,320 opens from an 11,000 email list. This is well above the average industry open rate, and it's well above what I was getting with the traditional autoresponder. It's right back to where I was getting with the autoresponder before the autoresponder started having a ton of trouble because they let a spammer into their network, which hurt everybody, even the people who were sending good, solid emails. Now, there are actually two big myths that people love to quote when they talk about using a self-hosted mailing service. The first one is that they're not going to get the deliverability. And as you can see, I just proved that wrong. I actually get a better deliverability sending with my Mail at WordPress plugin than I did with my high-priced autoresponder. The second thing that they love to say is that your IP address is going to get banned. That as soon as you start sending out mass emails, your IP address is going to get blacklisted and you're not going to get in on the inbox anymore and your reputation is going to get destroyed. And I want to go ahead and disprove that one right now. So here we are, we're on sender score and you can feel free to do this yourself as well if you want to test this yourself. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add in my domain's IP address. So I'm just going to type it in here. I'm going to check the captcha to show that I'm actually not a robot. I'll click on view report. And as you can see, this IP address is the real IP address for my host. There's my host name, brettretecki.com. There is my rating. I am rated as a high volume sender. You can actually see my volume has shot way up as I started using this in my own business. And look at my sender score. It is 99 out of 100. A perfect sender score is 100. My sender score for my IP address sending with my mail at WordPress plugin is literally almost a perfect sender score. So don't think that because you're sending from your own IP address or sending from a WordPress plugin that you're automatically going to get blacklisted and your IP address is going to get banned. That is completely false as long as you're sending good emails to people who opted in as long as you're not spamming and as long as you're using a system that sends out the emails in the proper format you are going to be treated as a good sender as you can see i am treated as a near 
perfect sender. So now that I have the Mail at WordPress plugin and I'm using it in my business, I can upload anybody I want to my email list. I don't have anybody telling me who I can send to and who I can't send to. I don't have anybody telling me how much I can send and when I can send. I don't have anybody telling me what I can send. And best of all, I'm not paying a huge monthly fee. I'm sending out as many emails as I like, as often as I like, without restriction and without any monthly fee paid to an autoresponder. I have been using the Mail It WordPress plugin exclusively for my business for quite some time now and I intend to continue using it exclusively for my business. If you're tired of paying a high monthly fee, if you're tired of having the autoresponders tell you what you can upload and who you can send to, if you're tired of not getting your emails in people's inboxes because the autoresponders are having problems, then you need the Mail It WordPress plugin. So I hope that you can see the value of this incredible plugin and to relieve yourself of those monthly costs forever. Mailit is on special today for $47 once off, no recurring costs. It's normally $67, but $47 on this special. It's a 14-day money-back guarantee. Don't hesitate because once the timer ends, it will be back to $67. Click the link below to buy now.